here's what we are going to do i challenge you to describe what your dream life looks like to me go ahead pause this video and in the comments below write down what your dream at present looks like okay done now you're going to tell me why you have not been able to achieve this dream version of yourself or dream life yet despite watching multiple videos trying various manifestation techniques and goal setting methods maybe you have an empty bank account maybe you have rocky relationships or maybe you started down the path but you quit halfway because it was too damn difficult now what if i tell you that no matter what this reason is whatever this reason is that's holding you back because 9 times out of 10 when i've asked people why they haven't achieved their dream life they always have an excuse but what if i tell you that no matter what this reason is i have a blueprint that can help you design and achieve your dream life in the next 6 to 12 months i know this because i have faced so many of the struggles that you are probably facing today i was broke like completely broke at one point in time i was going through severe family turmoil it was so hard i was unsure of my relationships my friendships my friends moved away to different cities and of course i was also struggling with my mental health but today my life is the complete opposite of what it was 3 to 4 years ago i have a career that i love i have my own space i have control over my time i have an awesome online community and i have people in my life who love me for who i am and i'm not saying all of this to brag i am very very grateful for how life has turned out but most of it was not just sheer dumb luck it was actually by design and you actually need very few things to get from point a to point b to actually design your dream life and live out your dream life and those are the eight points that we are discussing in this video today now let's say that you are starting here this is the current version of you version 1.0 where do you go from here and i'm going to say this what does your dream life look like and your dream life does not mean the only dream in your life it just means your next dream what is the next version of your life in your head look like what is that dream that you want to achieve your overarching goal that is your north star it dictates the majority of your actions let's take a few examples to explain this so it's not just like an abstract concept on one end we have simran whose goal or dream or whatever is to become a world renowned author right that's her next dream that she wants to achieve and she wants to touch millions of lives through her books so being a best selling author is where she wants to be at on the other hand we have divya who wants to become a baker open her own bakery and start selling these delicious baked goods in and around her city right and she also wants to earn a michelin star and all of those things so that is her 2.0 version so step 1 is actually getting clear on what that goal that dream of yours is that you want to achieve in the next phase of your life i actually dare you to write this down no matter how crazy how outlandish this sounds at present just write it down and if you sit down to do this and your mind immediately comes up with excuses like oh my god but i don't have resources how am i going to make money this is too hard i'm too old to do this it's going to take too much time that's actually your limiting beliefs that are holding you back If you are in the same boat you have to understand that often your biggest obstacle the biggest obstacle to your dreams is either the voice inside your head that's stopping you or the voices of other people telling you that you can't do something but do you think that people like Steve Jobs or Priyanka Chopra listened to those voices Steve Jobs dressed like a hippie did not shower for days dressed in the same clothes ate only vegetables was also apparently a very stinky person and he ended up building the world's first trillion dollar company he also revolutionized six different industries do you think he would have been able to do that if he let his own mindset or the fear of log kya kahenge stop him the truth is that all of us have these limiting beliefs thanks to our mental conditioning throughout the years and this is what triggers that imposter syndrome in us this is what makes us feel like we cannot achieve our dream but the difference between those who are able to achieve their dream life and those who are not is that the former group knows how to tackle these self limiting beliefs 
right? Remember that people who are crazy enough to think that they can change the world are the ones who actually do. Now, one way to actually tackle your self-limiting beliefs is to create a set of counter statements to address each of these limiting beliefs that you have. So, for example, when Simran sets down to write her book, her self-limiting belief tells us that she's not a good writer. So, a counter statement to this could be something like, if influencers can write books and become bestsellers, well, so can I. Or if this girl Ria feels like there's too much nepotism in the fashion industry and she can't become a fashion designer, a counter statement for her can be like, well, if Nancy Tyagi can do all of that without any resources, why can't I? I feel like having real world examples, real world people to base your experience off of can really help counter those negative thoughts for you. And trust me, you are going to find an example if you look for it. Someone before you has done it. And it's okay to map your journey and plan by following in their footsteps without reinventing the wheel. But now, despite doing that, your mind can be a bitch. It can come up with a thousand excuses to not do something, despite the fact that it is your dream that you want to work towards. And the reason for this is often a lack of subconscious alignment, which means that even though you are consciously working towards something, your mental conditioning and your deep rooted behaviors are not aligned with that thing yet. Like Simran here, who has started working on the first draft of her book. But she tends to lose focus every day, run into a writer's block. She watches all kinds of motivational talks, podcasts, reads self-help books, but nothing seems to work. On the other hand, she has Divya, who is working to become a well-known baker. But when asked about her progress, she has already signed the lease of her shop. It's in the process of opening. She already has the recipes and the menu down. Now, what's interesting is that both of them started on the same day for their own dream. But Divya is almost halfway towards achieving that dream. But Simran, on the other hand, is just stuck in the beginning. Now, how did that happen? It happened because Divya aligned her subconscious towards achieving her goal, while Simran was just chasing motivation externally. Now, how can you be more like Divya? The answer is by reprogramming your subconscious. And don't worry, there are a few simple ways to do this. The first is to simply declare and go public with this dream that you have. Telling the world about your dream is a powerful, powerful step. You are actually making a promise to your mind, to others by announcing. And that basically signals to your subconscious to act on it, to get aligned with that concept, right? And this happens so frequently with me. Whenever I do something that's just in my head, my chances of doing it are less. But as soon as I announce it on my Instagram, for example, or as soon as I make a promise to somebody else that this is what I'm going to do, I am 10x more likely to do that thing. Divya has done exactly this. She announced on her Instagram that she's opening a bakery and she told her friends and family about it. There was some backlash, but there was also support. And the backlash actually fueled her motivation further. Another thing you can do is something called verb to statement. Now, dreams are extremely powerful, but oftentimes they can also feel very vague, right? So if I go ahead and say something like, I want to be an author, Simran says, I want to be an author, and Divya says, I want to be a baker. These in their heads are overarching concepts, right? There are so many ways to become a baker. There are so many different ways to become an author. And when you say an author, it's also just one overarching concept. What kind of author do you want to be? So those are all the questions that your brain hasn't tackled yet. And we are not tackling them in this point. But what you want to do here is align your subconscious with this new identity that you're creating. And the easiest way to do this is by talking about this dream in I am statements, right? So instead of saying I want to be an author, what you want to do is say I am writing my first book as an author, you're making a very strong declaration in the present tense. And that basically helps your subconscious align with your current self with this identity shift making it a lot easier to do. The next thing you want to do is act first and plan later. You have to understand that planning is also a task for your brain, right? Often we end up spending so much time on planning that we never actually get to the action part or by the time that we get to the action part, we're already exhausted. The difference between Divya and Simran here is that Divya created a basic plan of action and then actually started taking action on those things as opposed to Simran who got stuck in the shackles of her own mind. So what you want to do is basically 
as soon as you create like a rough draft of a plan for your dream you want to start acting on it as soon as possible use that initial bout of motivation that you have and use it to fuel and bring momentum into your life okay the next thing you want to do is create a vision board because visual alignment is so so powerful for deprogramming your mind i have been creating vision boards for 5 plus years and it has honestly changed my life because it helps me visualize how i want my life to look and when it is constantly visible when i can always see it because i have it as a widget on my phone aligning my actions to that vision becomes so much easier i've made a full video on how i made my vision board on pinterest there's a minor error in it but please ignore that and you can watch this video somewhere like the link is somewhere on top right and keeping in line with your vision board the next thing that you want to do is visualize yourself as your dream self similar to you know writing down those i am statements this is a technique where your mind holds absolute control and if you know how to leverage visualizing correctly you can actually turn your life around completely countless celebrities founders speakers swear by it how i personally do it is i sit every morning uh, before you know i drink my coffee or while i'm drinking my coffee and i just imagine myself living as this version of me that i want to live as uh, i imagine what her day is like you know what she's doing what she's working on how her time is spent all of those things and for me now it takes about 5 minutes to do this it can take a little bit longer for you if you're just starting out but it's super super effective everything that i have today is something that i visualized at one point in time and if you're just starting out and you don't know how to do this by yourself i am linking a few guided visualization meditations down below that you can try out okay now a huge part of your visualization journey is actually understanding and visualizing the steps that ultimately lead to this dream life like how i sit and imagine what my dream version is doing on a day to day basis how she is spending her time that is very very important because all of that mental work that you're doing is baseless if you don't take action if you don't act on your dream life and the easiest way to start to take action is to focus your effort in one direction start by outlining all the steps that it will take for you to reach that dream that goal that you have so let's say for simran it's about coming up with an idea for a book then preparing an outline then writing the manuscript reaching out to publishers finding plus signing with a publishing house marketing her book and then finally enjoying the fruits of her labor now to actually get closer to that goal she has to start here at step 1 coming up with the idea and then once that is done she will go on to the next step and then next step and then the next step breaking down your dream into these achievable steps also helps take a lot of that overwhelm away a lot of that vagueness away from uh, this dream that overarching dream that you have and it helps your mind believe that it's actually achievable whatever you're doing next is actually achievable this is exactly what happened with my youtube journey right so back when i wanted to do youtube first in college it seemed like this impossible task But last year, when I actually started doing it, when I started to see results, my only goal was not to become a YouTuber, but to just push out one video every single week, just to hit that publish button every single week. And that step one itself led me to this place that I am today. Now, I would be lying if I said that this journey that I've taken from step one to coming here to becoming this person who considers herself a YouTuber was just like a straight line. I started publishing every single day, and bam. I hit like 250k subscribers. Journeys are never linear. It's never a straight road. And when you start on this journey of your dream life, you will have so many distractions along the way. Life happens and before you know it, you become derailed from the path. For example, Simran when she wants to become an author also wants to be a Pilates girly. She wants to be fit, she wants to have a big circle of friends, she wants to party every weekend. And at the same time, she also wants to have a freelance gig that helps her make money. while she's working on her book so that she can support herself financially right even with my own content journey this is the thing that happened because i had to financially support myself and take up a job while working on my content journey and i spent 6 to 7 hours going for that job that i didn't have time or the mental energy left to be able to create content to be able to focus on content on instagram let alone youtube all of these things act as distractions that divide your attention your focus and when your attention is divided 
what happens is that your subconscious mind is bound to think about task 2 even though you're still at task 1 so for example even in those days when i was creating content my mind still would wander off to the things that i had to do at my job it's natural it's how your brain functions and now this isn't to say that if you are working on your goal you should not live a healthy life you should give up on your friends completely or you shouldn't support yourself financially it just means that you need to prioritize where the majority of your time is being spent if out of the 16 working hours in a day you are spending 12 on random stuff that is not aligned with this vision that you have for yourself you're not really focusing on your dream then are you i personally tackled this by quitting my job taking up freelancing gigs that took up less time it also meant less money for the time being but it allowed me to focus a major chunk of my time on doing this what i'm currently doing and then over a period of time it led to a place where i was able to become financially stable now let's say that you decide to do something similar right you decide to embrace your dream you decide to start working on your dream and you decide that these are the xyz actions that i have to take you have a set of steps you're committed you're focused and then you are doing it maybe you quit your job to pursue your dream and then suddenly life gets in the way so simran for example decided to spend the next year of her life focusing on writing the first draft of her manuscript but along the way she found the person that she wants to spend the rest of her life relationships are beautiful that can be a very good thing for her career as well she got into this relationship it was one of the healthiest relationships of her life and now besides writing her book there is an additional focus in her life even though it's not taking up the majority of her time it's still a point of focus that does take up mental energy and so it's obviously taking her longer to write that manuscript now something like this something which is good in your life that happens and that makes you derail from your path a little bit can be thought of as a detour sometimes when life happens it presents us with alternative paths right these paths are not always bad so for example when google map reroute sometimes it is helping us reach our destination faster so for instance maybe falling in love made Simran realize that she can write amazing love stories and then talk about the concept of love from a young woman's perspective and there is a huge market for that so that becomes a part of her author dream i personally have had so many detours right so one way for me to look at this job angle all of this was that i didn't have time but another thing that happened because of me doing all of these different jobs was that they helped me learn all of the skills that have helped me grow this channel faster than if i would have started like 5 years ago divya on the other hand is faced with the death of her grandfather who she was very close to now despite her business doing very well initially she finds herself unable to work and focus on her dream she just does not have the mental energy the mental bandwidth and this is what you would call a setback something in life that happens that isn't conducive to your growth or isn't a good thing in your life again there are two ways for divya to take here right she might find herself bouncing back and resuming work on her business once she has dealt with her grief or she might find that that is not her dream anymore and this is a very very important point sometimes in life you will find that what you started out with does not remain your end goal anymore your dream changes and that's absolutely okay if you find a new path altogether but if years down the line let's say 5 years down the line you find yourself resenting your current actions your current life and wishing that you could go back to your dream you need to recommit to your original plan success is as much about commitment as it is about recommitment you remember my youtube detour journey i first wanted to become a youtuber when i was in college this is 2010 2011 so that's how many years ago that's like 12 13 years ago right but everybody said that it was a bs dream it's not a real career you can't really make money and so i kind of gave up on it honestly and i started working and i thought you know i'll make something of this this will lead me to a new path but that desire of creating videos of making content never really went away and then in lockdown i saw so many of these creators talking about the topics that i wanted to talk about and that 
kind of sparked something in me. It just reminded me of this dream that I used to have and I decided to give it another shot. And I started with Instagram. I was still too scared to do YouTube. And then at the beginning of last year is when I said, you know, I'm confident enough to take on YouTube as a challenge. Let's do it. Let's commit to doing this thing. And the results are in front of you guys. I like to think of recommitment as this second chance that you get from the universe. And when that desire for a dream resurfaces, and it's up to you to get up and grab it, right? We all get these chances. It's just up to us to recognize that opportunity. And when you give it your 100% effort, it just leads to the most amazing opportunities. It, it, it sparks something magical and it makes that dream possible. When you take responsibility and recommit to your vision, it gives you momentum and combine that with your mindset, strong mindset, of course, you know, and you are bound to achieve your goal. There is no way that you're not going to. Let's take another scenario. Maybe you say that Aditi, I didn't give up on my dreams for either of these reasons. I still want to achieve it, but I don't know why I can't. So oftentimes we just give up on our dreams or we don't go act on our dreams because we cannot see ourselves having it. We just cannot imagine ourselves being the author or being the baker or the YouTuber, right? It took me so much time to really start calling myself a creator. Like that imposter syndrome is real. I had this block in my mind and that reflected in my growth as well, right? Some people who start out on Instagram will get to like 500k in a matter of six months. I have been creating content for three years at this point. But when you start to embody your dream version and act like you are already that person, your confidence in yourself soars, it becomes unstoppable and you become more comfortable in your skin and you become so certain that you are going to be able to achieve that dream that anything that comes in your path as an obstacle, you are easily able to overcome it, right? Just imagine if J.K. Rowling had stopped writing after her first rejection, stopped calling herself an author, would we have had Harry Potter today? If Priyanka Chopra had never gone to take that audition in Hollywood because, well, she's a big enough star in India and, uh, you know, Gora people are never going to accept her, would she be the global star that she is today? Probably not. Because these women, they wanted to be like their dream version. They started acting like their dream version. They embodied their future self in their present life to create a hero's journey. So whether you're committing to your dream for the first time or you're recommitting to it, you need to start seeing yourself like that person that you want to be, that 2.0 version of you. And how do you exactly do that? You do that by celebrating every milestone you achieve on this journey to become this 2.0 version of you, right? So let's say Simran did it. She ended up writing the manuscript for her book. That's worth celebrating. She maybe spent six months, a year writing that manuscript, putting all of her thoughts on paper and creating this reality. Now she's thinking, what's the next step? Well, we have already outlined the next step. But the immediate next step is to celebrate this goal, achieving this goal that she has achieved, this milestone on her journey to become her best self. When I actually started with my journey of creating this version of my dream life that I currently have, I read all kinds of self-help books, right? And one thing that really stood out was atomic habits and this concept that uh, James Clear mentions in it, which is Q craving response reward system. And this formula also basically tells you that when you celebrate your achievement of your routine, of your goal, and when you do it again and again, it not only keeps you motivated, but it also sends a signal to your subconscious mind that you made it and that you can achieve the next step when you start to work on it. And if you make your mind up, about it, right? So I have been back and forth with celebrating my milestones, right? There are times when I completely forget to do it. And then there are times where I actively spend, you know, time celebrating my milestones. So right now I'm in that phase of my life and I urge you all to do it as well because it's really, really helpful. These milestone celebrations are actually what help keep me on track a lot of the times when I am running out of motivation, right? So every 15 days or so, uh, I will take my friends or my partner or my mom out to a nice place. We'll celebrate with like a nice meal or coffee or something like that. And that's just enough to keep me sort of grounded and motivated and on this journey for 
longer. So the next time that you achieve a milestone on this journey to your dream life, make sure you celebrate it, even if it means simply just ordering your favorite dessert or your ice cream and eating that, right? You will start to feel this profound sense of gratitude and you will develop an intrinsic motivation to work on that goal that is 100x more powerful than any motivational, any self-help book, any video out there, including this one. With that, it's time for your homework. Here is what you need to do for the next six to 12 months, because that is the timeline that it often takes to achieve one milestone on whatever journey you're in, right? First, you want to start by writing down your dream. What is that goal that you want to get to? What is that 2.0 version of you going to look like? Write it down. You can write it down on a piece of paper, on your notes app, wherever. You can refer to it again and again. Next, you are going to take a piece of paper, draw a line down the middle. And on the left side, you are going to write seven to 10 limiting beliefs that you have that are associated with this dream. Whatever excuses your mind just came up with while writing this dream down. And on the right side, you are going to write counter beliefs or counter statements in I am sentences to actually counter these limiting beliefs, right? So if your limiting belief is that I can't be an author, you're gonna write, I am writing my first book as an author. Another thing, if influencers can write their book, so can I, right? Things like that. Then you are going to go ahead and declare to the world that you are getting started with this thing, that you are taking this leap of faith. I know that I talk a lot about you know, Nazar, and I have this Nazar icon on my page as well. And a lot of the times, uh, ko nahi batana before you start doing something. But this here, the exercise that we're doing here is to actually program your mind into believing that whatever you're doing into is possible and into aligning your subconscious to act on that path. And oftentimes making a promise to somebody else actually helps keep you more accountable. There's this guy on my Instagram who tags me in these series of reels that he's doing. Srijan, shout out to you. He is doing like a 75 hard and I think he's on the second or the third leg of it. And he repeatedly tags me on his stories as proof that he is doing this thing, that he has made this promise, this commitment to himself, to the world. And I absolutely, absolutely love it. This is his page. You can go give him a follow. And you know, this is a great way of looking at things, especially when your subconscious is not aligned to you, right? So go ahead, whatever your dream is, go ahead, put it on your IG story, tag me if you want, and I will reshare it. And then we will keep you guys accountable. And then the next and the final step of your homework is that you're going to commit to taking action towards this dream life for the next 12 months. So you're going to outline a series of steps and that first milestone, whatever it is that you need to do to achieve that first milestone, you are going to do for the next six to 12 months. Come back here, let me know how it went. So save this video or whatever you want to do. The universe is waiting to help you make your dreams come true. You just need a little bit of hard work, a little bit of identity shift, some positive thinking and action driven steps to design your dream life. And you can do this for any dream you have. All of these steps that I've outlined, every single time you have a dream, you can put these in action and they will help you reach that goal no matter what it is. You have the power to create the life that you want. And if you require even more help on getting to this dream self that you have, check out this video next, because here I outline the concrete steps to changing your life completely in the next six months. And I will see you guys very, very soon in the next one, my lovelies. Bye.